So for Christmas, my wife nailed it this year. This is Auto Collabs. In the stocking was a bunch of things that I just use in regular life, like duct tape. Paper clips. Pretty close, like metal clamps to hold things to a workbench. And the only thing that was not like one of those functional utilitarian items, which I loved, was the Elon Musk biography by Walter Isaacson. The mm. same guy that wrote like the Steve Jobs one that's over my head here. Mm -hmm. And it's like 600 pages, 500 pages. But I got like 200 pages in and I realized something about EVs. And that is it's a miracle that Tesla ever even made it. And now oh. we're in this. Oh, yeah. And now it's like, but to see it go from like this and as an entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, we can appreciate this. The like the hairline between we're doing something really innovative that everyone's going to love and we're about to go out of business. <laughs> like that experience, it was so oh, rewarding to look, watch that happen for Elon Musk over and they, over and over. I, I, this is what's crazy. They went public at a buck 38 a share in 2010. In 2020, they were under, well, just at the start of 2020 or end of 2019 is when they went over $20 a share. Now we're, you know, they got this massive market cop. It's $250 a share. Like and it was as high stuff. as 400 at one point. Right. But that's, that was a, I mean, that's nine years that it took for them to become that's, like a legitimate thing. That's the thing. When, when I was reading the book and it has the date ranges for like Tesla. And by the way, like Elon Musk didn't start Tesla. Do you no, know this? No. Nope, he didn't. And the founders of the people that started it and like the, the path that goes there and the partnerships, Toyota actually invested 50 million in Tesla right. at one point. Like all the things that lead to the adoption. It's easy for us to think of it in terms of the last three to five years of being the real conversation. But oh my gosh, this conversation has been going on and happening and being dreamt about for a decade. More, more than that. And so I don't know. It was just kind of one of those eye-opening events that I thought I knew a lot of context but there's so much more to the story. Well, it's like your wife knew that we were going to be recording our first podcast. She definitely of the was not thinking year. about that. <laughs> <laughs> With Elena Ciccatelli uh, of uh, the EVs for Everyone podcast. I'm excited to have her on today. She's one of these like just infectious personalities that I feel like she never doesn't smile, which I don't know how that's possible. Be these around her when the Eagles have... are playing. There you go. <laughs> You'll see a go. whole other side. There you go. <laughs> Right. Of course, she's from Philly. So she is from Philly. There I mean, go. Michael's from Dallas well, now. I, I was just curious, I'm like, are you guys going to let us talk to her or no. <laughs> are we going to get into this? Episode? <laughs> we're just going to, we're having so much fun. We're going to skip the interview and go right to the outro. No, <laughs> no, we're going to get into this conversation. We know it's always a lively one with Elena Chickatelli. <laughs> Tell us about your dad, Michael. My, my dad's from uh, <laughs> Southern Italy. So you know invite I didn't a know? podcast host to be the guest. You know what I didn't know until maybe five years ago? That people in Southern Italy, technically, they don't speak Italian. What do they, they speak? speak like what when you go speak? to Northern Italy, like Rome, where they speak Italian, Southern Italy is like this weird, gerb gerbled up, like weird dialect that they, they, I mean, it's Italian, but it's not really Italian. So, you, so my dad's from Italy. My mom's from Portugal. You know what this means? Yeah, this is This gross. means the Italian in me wants everything, the best money can buy. I want the 85-inch Sony TV. The Portuguese in me wants it for $0 or less. You know, that, that's, you should probably do an ad for the real real then. You should be like, <laughs> you guys should do a collab. <laughs> it's so just me standing true. conflicted in a Best Buy. I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Please excuse the shenanigans. You kind of knew what to expect. No, right? you kind of you kind of showed up for the show, didn't you? I showed up for the show. I you, you know what? I, I feel like I won the uh golden ticket. Like I unwrapped the Wonka bar. I got the golden ticket, like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory vibes right now, because you guys know I'm super fans of what you do. So oh, I am. Oh, that that actually goes both ways. 
That goes both ways. And just so we can make sure everybody understands what you're up to these days, give us the quick summary because I love your content. I love the podcast. You're getting super creative with the, like, let's pile a bunch of people in a car and go for a ride and that, record it that's all. That's my podcast of the year, 2023. I'm giving just it. FYI. No I'll, I'll second that. Have I you watched it? that? Yes. Oh Fantastic. my gosh. Serious um, podcast. I mean, I've listened to a lot of podcasts. I, you know, like yeah, watch got, this one, you know, smart list is out there in the world. And that podcast <laughs> at used car week with Igor and Jimmy and you, like, I think John Foley was in there yep. too. Oh, they it were all in there. It was, yeah. But you know what the thing is, a Scott case from recurrent, um, the cake right. pop, you know, so I listen, <laughs> the, thing, the thing with that episode was, I just said, I want to talk about, and really this is the theme of the show. I want to see who you are as a person, right? We come to work, we come to uh, events, and we are, obviously we're putting our best foot forward, but it's also like, Paul, who are you as a person? Michael, we had a very nice conversation about your father. So like, I want to get those tidbits about what you do and what you're about because then yeah we can talk about electric vehicles we can talk about evs but i feel that people want to get to know you they want to get to know what you're about and you guys do this so well um just in all the content you create and all of the the community that you've built and just all of the things that you do and i think there there needs to be more of that in the auto industry and i'm i'm just happy to play a very to small that. We completely agree, first of all. We <laughs> this has been an advertisement for a shorter. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, okay, so, but here's, here's what's interesting to me, and I think the way that you position that, specifically around EVs, because we know as in, in auto, at least internally, there's been this, we, we feel, and the reason why this podcast is Auto Collabs, there's this, this almost sense that there's, there's four different, types of personas and they're all against each other, right? OEMs and industry partners and dealers and consumers and they're all butting heads. And yeah. so we just feel like it would be better if they came together. And then there's this, there's almost this like new entrant into the the space, which is anybody that puts EV anywhere near their, it, it's like anywhere near their title or their job description or things that they do, as well as just the car that is the EV. And so we just reject any personification of like that that personhood. Do you feel that that's that, that that's like a reality that you're experiencing? I feel like this is a therapy book. Yeah, very we much. Reject so. no. the personification of the personhood. I'm like one, <laughs> two, three. Which is the real me? No, but the thing is, is that the thing is, Kyle, is I understood what you said, so it was it right. was articulated. You're smarter than me. No, it was articulated beautifully. And the, the sad fact is, is that this is such a polarizing topic. And you guys know this and being in media, yeah, it kind of helps to have a polarizing topic as the topic of your show. Like, it, it just, it is what it, it is, right? I mean, at that, frankly. So, but at the same time, there's got to be a there. There's got to be a, a way forward. You guys keep saying keep pushing back. I say keep charging forward. Believe like it. there's there's a, there's a path. No pun path intended. Somewhere. And she used the so, word charge in that too. Right. So yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there there are yes, Kyle. There are a lot of people that are very passionate. I would say in one direction. And then there's the 180 degree passion in the other direction. I just want to report on what's happening and what's interesting and, and also getting the story behind the folks that are doing something a little bit differently. So I'll just give you a quick example. So I had um, uh, this woman's name is Natalie King. She has a charging manufacturing company and she is building commercial grade chargers in Detroit. Um, and I had her on the show because I said, Natalie, not a lot of people know about you. Like you've done all of these amazing things. She worked in solar and now pivoted over to, she saw the, the, um, the opportunity in electric vehicles. She's using a lot of the community in Detroit as her workforce and has this like really holistic approach to it. So there's there's really cool, inspiring people doing really neat things in the community around electric vehicles. So I want to shine a light on 
maybe some of the more lesser known things that are happening, almost like the Guy Fieri of like electric vehicles. I mean, I know I'm probably not going to talk about Flavortown on the show, but I, you know, in that same kind of way of, hey, let's have a conversation. What are the cool things that you're up to? And yeah, we'll talk about electric vehicles. And first of all, I got a new show for you before I ask my question, because all of these EVs are getting installed at like restaurants and gas stations across the country, you should actually like merge Flavor Town and EV <laughs> charging network somehow into a show. It would be amazing. I okay. Would, so oh, and, and Kyle, you you guys have to be the first guest then. Okay. Can we just say like let's I'm do in. this? And let's let's do go. An episode. You know what We've been trying to do a travel show. <laughs> What I intrigues love it. me about I love this, it. you know, what intrigues me about this is that you can actually make a whole show about Teslas. It's the craziest uh, thing. It is, the, <laughs> it is the craziest thing. You could absolutely do a whole show about Teslas, and oh, that's not what your show is about. I saw EV. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Okay, here's my real question. Go back to the beginning because you talked about these inspiring people. You've done. A couple different podcasts in the past. You've worked for some large companies. You've had your own startups. Why the switch and the move to yeah. delving into specifically communications about EV? Where did that come from? Where did that passion begin? It really came from, I think, my... So really my time at Lyft, I think, was uh, kind of a big eye opener for me. And that's where I, I met you guys. I know I was still working at Lyft when we had the first Con in Philly. I know. Yeah. I was like, she's from Philly. We're in. We're <laughs> I remember in. thinking that right away. <laughs> so, but that that whole experience really kind of uh, made me take a second look and really get into um, the partnership aspect. Like, really, my role there was business development and partnership development. And I prior, well, actually, simultaneously while I was at Lyft, this also dovetails into a pretty funny story. I started a podcast. It was called the Side Gig Central Podcast. It had nothing to do with automotive. It was purely like, let's talk about your startup and let's talk about like guerrilla marketing tactics that you can use on a shoestring budget because I'm all about bootstrapping. So I did this show. And in the course of launching the show, I wrote this garbage press release. It was absolute garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, uh, you know, I at the time it was 2019, Taylor Swift just released an album. And I put in there like, you know, side gigs are the new economy. And, and I was, you know, I was the, author the authority from Lyft and I was keyword stuffing. I was like delivery, ride share, uh, you know, <laughs> sustainability and like all of the. <laughs> and I love your transparency with this. So I, so I, I submitted the press release. I then was asked by Cheddar Business to do an interview on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange to talk about the side gig economy. Okay. <laughs> You're like, oh crap. I will, you yeah. I will send you the link to this. And so I did two episodes, guys. Like I didn't even, and when people say like, oh, I'm afraid to get started. I did this press release with, I had one episode done. Like oh, wow. that, was, that was it. <laughs> it, didn't, it was all just smoke and mirrors. Listen, and we're going to pretend that we've never done that. <laughs> So it was, it was the wildest thing, but that, okay. So to what happened kind of to that podcast? Over, so it's currently in the podcast graveyard, but I'm thinking about resurrecting it, um, you know, in, in a different way, but maybe rebooting it. Um, but I've been just so busy because Evie's for everyone, just like the momentum of this show is way beyond what I was doing before. So anyway, the reason why, to answer your original question, Kyle, the reason why I'm like now all in doing the show is number one, I love it. This is truly my passion. I love the, not only the, the people aspect of it, but it's also to being able to put on a show. Like, I know this is going to sound really cool. <laughs> this is going to sound really corny, but like when you have a podcast, it is truly a show and yes, you are entertaining, but then you're also, yes, you bring forward information, but people want to be excited about consuming your content. And again, like I keep going back to you guys do this really, really well and understand this. There's only a couple of people I think in automotive that truly understand 
what that's about. And so that gets me really excited meeting new people, the potential of doing a Guy Fieri podcast for EVs with chargers at different, you know, <laughs> different uh, Buckies Jeez. or like whatever. Um, so I, I think from the experience that I did at, at Lyft was really one of those things where it was, all right, well, I can stay, I can stay comfortable in corporate or I could really follow and carve this own path that I got going on right now. Well, we're super glad that you entered this space because Man. it is it is good to have other people that kind of have the same DNA, the people who are ready to do it, the people who are actually Eagles fans. I have to throw that in there. <laughs> ah, Lee, I, dude, that's you all we can't can't let all up have now. People. It's, what is it with you people? You, well, that's exactly it. You can't do anything <laughs> about it. That's the problem. You can't do you, it's a life sentence. It's a it life sentence. Eagles fans because Taylor Swift isn't dating anybody on that team yet. Actually, Taylor Swift is an Eagles fan. That's the funny part. Like people are starting to say, like, since she and Travis Kelsey started dating, right? right. Like the, the Chiefs have done terrible. People are like, oh, it was her intention all along to scuttle the team. <laughs> yeah, you're like, yeah, that's her intention. She could buy the team and really, if she wanted to scuttle that sucker them to London, Canada. Yeah. Like Where? if she really is there London, Canada? Damage. Elena, I have a serious question though. Um, Let's go for a what, we, <laughs> um, why he is Nick Sirianni keep bills. running quarterback sneaks? I'm just kidding. That wasn't a serious question. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Like, See, I hit the before. hot one. No, but the real, you, I might have zoned out though a little bit earlier. The the show that you did from the New York Stock Exchange. When did you say you're reviving that on the Asodu Network? Oh my gosh! When I, just, just <laughs> like just, text me. We'll we'll figure out a time. <laughs> But we can, yeah, let's chat. Let's have a conversation about it. Like, look, nothing is off the table right now. Like, it's kind of the same honestly. way. So nothing, I have a question like, about yes. dealer sentiment and EV. Yeah. So you're, you kind of get the, the advantage of, of having a hand in all the different segments like EV drivers, industry partners, the charging, the dealership world, obviously, with the events that we go to. Um, I've heard a lot of sentiments from dealers. Some seem to be very anti EV because of things manufacturers are help, help, you know, forcing them to do. Um, other dealers are very pro EV and they're doing everything they can to adopt it. And then there's like this middle group who are like, Hey, I'm all for it. We just have to have the right things in place to adopt it. What pushback primarily do you get when you talk to dealers about EVs? Like what's the top thing that dealers are like, this is why I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah, no, and and like you said, it is very much uh, a divided topic, and you know we've got credit is tightening, you know trade ins are you know upside down and like record highs, you know EV inventory is creeping up there, right? And so I that's oh a lot of pushback, right? And that just that garners a lot of. Um, uh, just a feeling of th these are uncharted waters, not really a hundred percent sure. Um, but at the end of the day, I think, and, and Paul, I'm going to actually go back to something that you said at the year end uh, extravaganza, your, your final thought. Do you remember what you said at the end about how this is, this is going to be the year where substance is going to take this is the year where folks are going to be like, do you have the substance? Do you have the creativity? Do you have the wherewithal to maybe explore something a little bit different yeah, and get creative? Yes. And I couldn't but also, agree I think before. it's also having the depth to, to back it up, right? Not just to like, say, I'm going to wait out there, but it's actually what's it, what's it tethered to. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so, um, you know, I know you, you guys, uh, you know, have, have your your finger on the pulse of dealers, and I, I know that you probably know. You, I feel like you would know one or two dealers that uh, <laughs> that are either in the pro or yeah, uh, absolutely. I feel like you guys would know a couple of people. Um, All the way. But, I will say this about about that comment. Um, we do have lots of dealership relationships between the three of us, right? It's easily in the hundreds of personal relationships, and I will say that the dealers who seem to be the most progressive and successful, not just the ones dreaming it up, but the ones actually backing it up with sound execution across the board, not in EVs or ICE, but fixed ops, you know, sales, service, all the things seem to be leaning in on EVs. And if it's not 
sales, it's definitely preparation and education. Um, and Kyle's nodding. Cirillo's just standing there. He's just got us on a camera loop. He's not actually on the call anymore. <laughs> well, yeah. he's, no, yeah, he's I, here. He's here. I, I, I <laughs> just want to jump in real quick and, and um, comment on that. So um, I had uh, Matt Jones from True Car uh, was one of the interviews I did also at Used Car Week. And I love what he said. And I have to give him credit for this quote. I cannot take credit for it. He said, I know we always got to talk about more EV education, more education, more education. He's like, no, these consumers are very educated. You know, they're going to know like down to the to the kilowatt hour <laughs> they're so charging he's like they need an ev action plan and i was like Psh, like what <laughs> did you just say <laughs> like that was such a like a brilliant thing to say because i think he's he's right um you know we the back to your point paul about that you know having people um having people at the dealership feel like this is something that they can say like, yeah, I feel comfortable selling this. Now there's the yeah. other issue of like, let's align on like, how much am I getting paid to actually sell this EV? And again, I was listening very closely again at the, the year end extravaganza. I was like, what are they going to sell that say about EVs? And <laughs> some people were like, don't force EVs on other people. I was like, Oh, message received. Right. So, <laughs> so it's, it's interesting to 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 yeah, hear I think, I think it's that, like the the general the general sentiment that I'm getting is is I haven't heard there are there are a small pocket of dealers that are like forget EVs we're never doing that right but by and large and as evidenced um by uh, a new friend of ours that got 4000 signatures that the whole letter to the administration was not don't bring EVs mm -hmm. it was Let's do it better, right? Mm. That that there that we see this as, the, as a future. We see this as something that's coming. But let's make sure that we're doing it better. Do it better for the consumer. Better for the OEM. Better for the dealer. Better for you know, like the infrastructure. And I think that that's the that's the probably the point that that is probably is hopefully going to be driven home through the dealer network to consumers is, hey, here's the better option. Here's the better way. Here's the action plan. Here's how you can go from your gas powered vehicle to a hybrid, to an to a plug-in, uh, you know, a plug-in hybrid to an EV and feel comfortable about the transition. And if you're in an apartment complex and you want an EV, what does it look like for you to charge that vehicle in different locations? Like here are ways that we can educate you on your ownership and not just your your purchase, which mm -hmm. it, which which will drive retention in the end. Actually, it's a massive opportunity. This is mm. I'm see now. I'm I'll preach in here. Yeah, you are. Yeah, we're yeah. picking it up. I'm preaching. I apologize. You're picking but, up what you're putting down. But the whole thing is like is it? now we have an opportunity at retention that we haven't had for a long time because we now mm -hmm. be if we become the source, then retention is is potentially a lot easier because of the changeover in the type of vehicle right do you think ge genuinely this is a genuine question, do you think we hurt the whole ev narrative by coming out of the gate so strong on the environmental play mm. right because that's where we started it was like we got to save the environment and then now you have dissenters who are like but have you seen how much cobalt and the mining process and the blah, 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 blah? Like, do you think we should have just came out of the gate saying, here's a different way to drive a vehicle? It and wouldn't have gotten off. I think it wouldn't have gotten off the ground because that's how government money got involved. Mm. No, oh, no, you're not, now. you're not getting, you're not getting federal funding just to see if we can have a better way to drive a car. I'm genuinely curious because you're right. That kind of caused a narrative. And so I'll tell you what, I am 200 pages into the Elon Musk book. Yeah. And it has totally changed my perspective fully on the synthesis of EVs, how they came to be, right. why they came to be. And I, I don't think that why we started is why we're going to finish. I think that EVs overall may have started and the funding and, and like the the higher, the higher level purpose of let's get off a of reliance. Well, some people was different. Some people said, let's do it because it's bad for the environment. 
And there were a lot of people that said, it's bad to be that dependent on an energy source that isn't produced here in the US. I think that was also a big driver. It was energy security mm -hmm. and people saying that's a source of a lot of overseas conflict is fighting over the oil. And I think like all of that got mashed up. I think at this point where we are right now, EVs are going to slowly become more adopted and it's not an either or. I think it's going to be a both end world. But at the same time, I think the reason they're going to continue to be adopted is because they actually are really great to drive and they actually are real convenient. And Steve that's Greenfield right. said it in his thing this morning, he's like, the shift is going on from people looking at a car from something you buy and put gas into something you plug in, like your phone and a device. And like, to me, it practically makes sense as soon as some of the, the infrastructure catches up. So I don't think the reason we started is the reason we're going to finish. No, that and that's so well put. And I think also too, like people want to be able to afford a vehicle. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Like, like that's always the driving like, factor. We, it's not yeah, a fourth like, or fifth we, car. Right. Yeah, exactly. And then so I, I think also too, what's kind of cool about talking to all of these different areas of the EV ecosystem is that it is, it's, it's like an octopus. There's so many tentacles and so many different stakeholders. It's, um, it's almost like you have to like hurt. I know we say herd the cats a lot in <laughs> like oh. auto retail it's it's heard the cats times a thousand with with EV right because never before have you had um, you know such like restriction regulation um, mandates all of the things that you know as dealers as entrepreneurs are like ah what what is what is this <laughs> right this is not you know uh, business as usual this is this is something this is a different animal this is a different beast but at the same time is it really Okay. So, yeah. right. You know, so, uh, it, it gets, it gets a little bit crazy, but at the same time, this is the reason why I wanted to do this show because right. I love getting everyone's <laughs> opinion. And when there are a lot of opinions, there there's a lot of listeners. We have to ask the question that everyone really wants to know. Do you drive an EV? I do. Yes, I do. And it? I actually, I don't, I don't drive a Tesla. I drive a, a Chevy Bolt, uh, EUV. And oh wow! Yeah, there's I, other electric vehicles. Yeah, there's actually <laughs> other know. ones other than a Tesla. <laughs> but yes, That's the answer awesome. is yes. I was like, look, I gotta walk the walk, right? I mean, that that would not make sense whatsoever. But hey, it's a great car. I you know, like so many of us here, work from home, so it it suits me for what I need it to do. And I don't know, I like it. Shout out to Mary Barra. Cool. I like you a lot. There you go. Do you use, <laughs> the real question is, do you use CarPlay? Um, oh. that's a good question. Actually, I don't even really, I don't even really plug in my phone. Like, I'm kind of an. Old, there you like, go. So she doesn't user. care that the new ones I don't are going to have care. CarPlay. No, I actually, I she actually, gets into the car, slaps open the eject on her Sony Walkman <laughs> yeah, cassette. I know. Ah. Oh my gosh, Michael is roasting me so. Opens much. up the 15 <laughs> CD folder. He's roasted you about Teslas. Hey, yeah. Hey. Now Sony well, you know. likes you. That means he likes you. Know, you. No, a only he's a only No, right. I, I thought we had a nice thing going when we were our conversation about Italy. Now you're roasting you're me about my Sony Walkman. Walkman. Hey, well, to be fair, my own father, the earliest compliment I can remember from my own father was, hey, what, what? You look funny when you sleep. <laughs> And that's when I knew he loved me. Because <laughs> he was your, watching you sleep. That's just absolutely I never told you you look like a turtle. Yeah. <laughs> What it's a true mess. story, I bet too. Well, Elena, we have had I like I think we all could have a hour long podcast at this point, but we've run out of time on auto collapse this time. People are going to have to head over to EVs for everyone. It's EVs the number for everyone dot com. You can find that. They you sh you should go listen to that if you're not already subscribed. Mash that button, like it all over uh, for her. Um, and thank you so much for joining us on Auto Collabs. It's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you, Kyle, Paul, Michael. This has been amazing. And we absolutely need to do a follow-up at NADA. I know you're going crazy at NADA, but we need to. Either. Can we just go and get breakfast and that be the episode? There we yes. go. In a, okay. in a All boat. right, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I think that would, be, that would be just 
phenomenally spectacular. Okay, well, I've been dying to know this since the uh, intro. How, how many how many uh, jokes you can toss at someone or how much shade you can throw? Is that oh, how much? Yeah. I, was, I think if we had a shade counter, like, it'd be like, <laughs> I just, ding, no, I thought, what an endearing individual. But what I was really thinking about was... You had mentioned all of the things you use in daily life in your stocking uh, before this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, you brought up the the beautiful segue into our conversation with Lena. Uh, did your wife passively aggressively put any everyday items that she believes you should use in the stocking? That's a great question. <laughs> and no, soap. she didn't. And she also like, it's almost like to her chagrin, she puts in items that would require me to do something else. Because she knows that my propensity is to just go get into something. And so she just, she loves me. What can I say? She knows me and she loves me. So there was gorilla tape in my stocking. You know what really, I really enjoy just aside from Elena's um, infectious kind of happiness, which I love the day and age we live in where they're, where who's the futurist that said we are experiencing basically a hundred years of advancement in technology every five years i can't remember his name but he was like a futurist that like warren buffett relies on yes and and here we are today speaking to an individual who has enough subject matter to talk about ev like we are in the jetsons time period guys mm -hmm. that she that there is enough to talk about evs going on like it is crazy yeah. to me it's exciting to me it's like mazel tov to to her podcast but Imagine the insights she's getting, like the undercurrent of insights that she's getting, similar to your book about For real. Elon Musk. For real. For real. I mean, yeah, let's think about that. Like, we existed before the phones did, the three yeah. of us, mostly. And the cell like, phones. The cell, that's what I meant. Yeah, not all I told about pagers the other day. They were like, what? Oh, I, love talk ah, I love talking about pagers. I have all kinds of pager stories. Um, we have vehicles that are powered by batteries. Yep. The end. And they're so fun to drive. The they end. are fun to drive. I'll give you that all day, every day. <laughs> so fun all to day, drive. Every day. Well, hey, you got to check out uh, Lena's podcast. Uh, we'll probably have her on again because it was too much fun yeah, for all of us. And uh, on behalf of myself, Michael Cirillo, and Paul J. Daly, thanks for joining us on Autoclaps. Welcome, Welcome to, to Auto Collapse. <laughs> Why are we recording? Are we rolling yet? <laughs>